Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Pokemon fans of the world! Mega Crasher is here, and are you guys ready for Subscriber Showdown Sundays, baby? Woo! This is the series of the week where it features this crazy nuthouse known as Mega Crasher narrating the amazing battles that you, the amazing people of the community, sent to me. And it just so happens that we happen to have ourselves our first of four matches right now, right here, baby. So let's get this started. We have ourselves a Generation 7 Pokebank OU match. We got Yato XD versus Tim Tombulus. So let's see what Yato is packing. We have ourselves the Electivire. We have ourselves the Empoleon, the Crocodile, the Drapion, the Star Raptor, and the Gallade. Or could that be Mega Gallade? I don't even know, man. But Tim Tullis is packing a pretty interesting looking team to say the least. We have ourselves a Metagross, or could that be Mega Metagross? I don't even know, man. We have cute little Cortana. We got ourselves a Pheromosa. We got Dragonite. We got the Minior and the Zerka Tree. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, say your fingers are stunned and get hyped for the first battle. Woo! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we have ourselves the Gallade on one end and the Pheromosa on the other. Could that be Mega Gallade? No, it is not. And he barely hangs on with that lunch, man. Holy shit. But he takes out Pheromosa with a Psychic? What the hell is this shit? A special Gallade. Like, I have not, not seen that before, man. What the fuck? All right, must be one of them fire sets. I don't even know, man. But Dragonite comes in, and we got that extreme speed to take your ass out. And Gallade goes down. And now we got the Empoleon, man. So what's going to happen here? We got the Dragonite on the Dragonite. Going to boost that attack and special attack up by one stage. And he hangs out with the Ice Beam. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know how weakness policy works, man. When you're hit with a super effective move, your attack and special attack both get a plus two boost in their stats. And considering that Dragonite has multi-skill, which allows for it to take special hits if it's at full health. Oh my god, that Ice Beam didn't even phase Dragonite, man. That thing's four times weak to ice. Oh shit. Yep, Empoleon's done. It just got choke slammed right with Earthquake, man. That's it. And Electivire, what are you gonna do, baby? You're gonna get choke slammed right through a table thanks to Earthquake. That's it. That's it. It's done like biscuits and gravy, man. Star Raptor's gonna come in and Fire Punch. Uh, that just. Oh my god. Fire Punch just like cleaned his clock. Now we got Drapion to come in, only to get completely Big Mac'd by the likes of the Earthquake. And now we got Crocodile coming in with the Intimidate, but I don't think it's going to be enough at this point. Oh, he actually hangs on. But what's going to happen? You got the Dragon Claw, and he hangs on. Man, the Dragon has one bulky-ass mofo, even without Multiscale being attacked. And the Extreme Speed is going to take him out, and that right there is going to be the G. Holy shit on bricks, man. What a way to start out Subscriber Showdown Sundays with these kind of biscuits right here, man. Oh my god. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, great game by both comparisons. But now, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the second battle? Woo! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the next battle or what? Because I sure am, man. So this battle now comes in the form of a Generation 7 Pokebank Doubles OU match. That means it's six for six. You got two Pokemon on one end of the field, two Pokemon on the other, and they're gonna go at it, man. We have ourselves Tonacho ACDC, or sorry, ADC. <laughs> what the fuck? ACDC, man. Oh my god. And then we have ourselves Sky Knight Eman. So let's see what these teams consist of. So Tonacho ADC consists of Pelipper, Shinotic, we also have ourselves the Toxapex, the Oreguru, we got the Vicavolt, and the Rhyperior. Now, Sky Knight of Man is packing what looks to be a all-out dragon team, because we got the Guard Chop, we got the Turtonator, I'm sure that Charizard's going to be Mega Charizard X, no doubt about it. We also have ourselves the Salamence, we got the Dragology, and we got the Gudra. So with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get set for the second battle. Here we go, baby. So we have ourselves Pelipper and the Toxapex Ling off on one end, and we got the Guard Chop Turtonator on the other. Here we go, baby. We got that drizzle for the Pelper going on. And Turtonator switches out right away and into the Salamence. Oh, shit. Something's going to get destroyed. So we got the Earthquake from uh, the Guard Chop. That's going to do a lot of damage to Toxapex and nobody else. So Pelper with the Skull. That does a lot of damage. 
And we got Toxapex with the Scald. And guess what? No bird from either of them! Oh, shit! No sandwiches and breakfast for you, man. No burns. None of that shit. And, of course, Vicavolt comes in. And Garchomp's Earthquake is absolutely useless at this point. And we got the Vicavolt taking the Dragon Claw from the Salamence. And Pelipper Skull to Garchomp. And it goes down. Sun goes down. But now we got the Gudra in effect. Oh, shit. Salamence with the Z-Move. And the Supersonic Sky Strike. That Vicavolt is history, man. That crit did not need to happen whatsoever. And Draco Meter from the Gudra onto the Pelper. That does a shit ton of damage. But Pelper with the Hurricane, though, on the Salmon's gonna do some healthy amount of damage. But now we got Oranguru and Pelper switches out and brings in the Shenotic. Oh my god, I just gotta say, regular Shenotic looks so much better. But, anyways, man, Gudra goes for the Protect. Salmon's with the uh, Dragon Claw on the Shenotic. And obviously, that's not gonna do anything because of the Perfect type. But now Oranguru goes for the Trick Room. And with the Focus Blast, obviously, gonna miss the Gudra. And the Sludge Ball, four times super effective on the Shenotic. And that thing is a tank, man. And we got Rain Dish plus the Leftovers plus the Leech Seek. Gonna heal it up very, very nicely man. So Gudra switches out and goes into Dragalgy, man. What is going to happen? Shinotic with the Protect, and it's not going to be able to take any damage that turn. Or a Guru goes to the Psychic on Dragalgy. That does a shit ton of damage, and Fly doesn't do anything to Shinotic, man. But the thing is poison, so it's going to be worn down slowly but surely in this battle. Shinotic switches out, goes back into Toxapex, and a Psychic on the Dragalgy. Uh-oh, and it survives, man. We got the Sludge Bomb from the Dragalgy on the Toxapex. Not going to do really anything. And the Kurunch on the Oranguru, man. Going to drop that defense and deal just a little under half health damage. So now, what is going to happen? Dragalgy switches out, goes into Charizard, and we got the Toxic onto the Salamence now, and the Psychic now from the Oranguru onto the Charizard. Not going to do that much damage, but now we got Dragonets on the Salamence. It's not giving a shit at this point, man. The rain has stopped, and the Trick Room is going to wear out this turn as well, and Oranguru switches out, goes into the Rhyperior, and it's Mega Charizard X. Oh, shit. Here we go, man. That Dragon Claw is going to do so much to Toxic Effects, and the Flare Blitz doesn't do that much to Rhyperior, man. It's a fucking tank man what did you expect in the venom shock on to the Salamence. He still hangs on, and he hangs out with 2% health, man. That's not good. And the Dragon Claw is going to take out the Toxapex. Oh, shit. But now, we got the Dragon Claw onto the Rhyperior. But what's Rhyperior going to do? The Rock Slide is going to cream both Mega Charizard X and the Salamence. It's going to be a double to it or double KO here in this turn, man. But now, we got Gudra coming in, and we also have Dragalgy coming in as well. What's going to happen next? We got Pelper coming in on the other end. So, what is going to happen here in this turn? We got Gudra going for, some, for the Protect. And the Shadow Ball onto the right here. He hangs out with 2%. Unbelievable. And Pelper with the Hurricane takes him out. Okay, man. So now, Rhyperior goes for the Earthquake. And obviously, it's not going to do any damage that turn. Because Gudra's going for Protect. And now, we got Tortinator in the house. And Rhyperior switches out. Goes back into Shinotic, man. And we got the Sludge Bomb on the Pelper. He hangs on 1%, but he gets poisoned. But... He goes for a Roost, man, so he's going to get a little bit of health back. And, of course, the Turner with the Dragon Pulse on the Shinotic, not going to be of any effect whatsoever, man. So what is going to happen next, yo? This is getting pretty damn crazy. Oh, my God, Shinotic got blown back with the Sludge Bomb, but he still hangs on. That's crazy. And, of course, the Dragon Pulse onto the Pelper. He still hangs on as well. And now we got Leech Seed onto the Gudra from the Shinotic. And he's getting that health back with the Leftovers, Rain Dish, Leech Seed, whatever the hell you want to call him, man. He's got so many ways to get health back. But now Pelipper goes down thanks to the Poison. And in comes Rhyperior now. So now Shinotic goes for Protect. What's going to happen here, man? Got the Sludge Bomb. Not going to do anything. And the Dragon Pulse is going to take out the Rhyperior. Okay, now it is two versus two. It has come down to the wire, man. This is getting pretty crazy, yo. Okay, man. What's going to happen next? This is getting crazy. We got ourselves an Oranguru coming back in. And Shinotic goes for that Protect. So what's going to happen here? And the Sludge Bomb, obviously not going to have any effect on Shinotic. But, of course, that Dragon Pulse is going to do a little damage to Oranguru. But he eats that Citrus Bear right up. And we got the Trick Room in effect. Oh, shit. This ain't good. This ain't good whatsoever, man. So what is going to happen next, man? I don't even know. This is getting pretty damn crazy. And of course, Strike Sap. Oh, we forgot about the fact that Shinotic has Strike Sap. And it heals its HP based on the opponent's attack, yo. And Oranguru misses a Focus Blast again. And that Sludge Bomb is going to do a lot of damage to Shinotic, man. But that thing is so damn bulky. It's unbelievable how bulky that thing is. And just how annoying and how much health it can get back in a single turn. That's so crazy. 
Anyways, Oranguru takes that Dragon Pulse right in the beak. Or not in the beak, it's not a bird, right in the face. And the Sludge Bomb is going to take out the Oranguru that turn, man. So now it has come down to Shinotic versus Turtonator and the Gudra, man. This is getting hyped, man. But I'm thinking at this point right here, can Shinotic do the impossible and hang on, man? That Strength Sap is an absolute killer, and that Flamethrower is doing next to no damage. But the Sludge Bomb certainly will! Oh, shit! Uh-oh, that ain't good. That ain't good whatsoever, man. Shinotic is not looking good at this point, so what is going to happen here? He goes for Protect, but... I'm really not sure if it's going to matter at this point. I mean, the rain is also gone, so that means that his uh, fire weakness is now going to be a little bit more exploitable because rain cuts down the power of fire type moves. And Shinotic goes down, or sorry, Gudra goes down thanks to the Leech Seed. And that Flamethrower is going to take out Shinotic from the Turtonator. And that right there is going to be the game! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that was down to the wire if I've ever seen it, man. Woo! Great game by both comparisons, but now. Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the third battle? All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for yet another battle? We have yet another Generation 7 Pokebank Doubles OU match. We got the Dragon Trainer himself, Sky Knight of Man versus Klingsor. Okay, man. So, we have ourselves some slight changes here in Sky Knight and Man's team. So, we got the Garchomp. We have the Kingdra now. We also have ourselves... I, that has to be Mega Charizard X. I mean, the only difference in this team is it's not Turtonator. We have Kingdra instead. So, we already know what the team is, man. You know, Gudra, Dragalge, Dragonite, Mega Charizard X, Kingdra, and Garchomp. And then, K Klingsor is packing the Sableye. Or could that be Mega Sableye? I don't even know, man. We have the Aria Dose. We got the Nidoking. King. We got the Drift Blim. We have ourselves a Drapion and the Keldeo. So with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get hyped for the third battle. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we have ourselves the Dragonite and the Garchomp leading off on one end. And we got the Ariados and the Sableye leading off on the other. What's going to happen here, man? Sableye goes for the fake out on the Garchomp. Little does he know he's taking some Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin damage. But that is going to shut down the Garchomp on that given turn. But Dragonite goes for the Dragon Dance. And we got the Sticky Web from the Ariados. What's going to happen next? We got the Will Wisp onto the Dragonite. But he eats that Lone Berry. Cures that Poison or that Burn. He doesn't even care, man. Dragonite goes for the rock side sniping both opponents right there and guard chop now goes for the rock side taking out aria dose and misses sableye unfortunately so what's gonna happen next we got keldeo coming in and we got the will wisp again from the sableye and he's gonna burn the dragonite without any chance of curing but dragonite doesn't even care he goes for the dragonite and we got the keldeo with the icy wind Going to do some heavy damage to both Dragonite and the Garchomp. Going to lower the speed by one stage each. And Garchomp goes for that Earthquake and takes out Sableye. And does a lot of damage to Keldeo. So what's going to happen next, man? Oh, snap. We got the Drift Blim now up in this. And Garchomp switches out and goes into Charizard. Oh, snap. And we got the Rock Slide going on. And that's going to do a little bit of damage to Keldeo. And oh, snap. Okay, that's not good. Drip him with the fucking weakness policy, and that's just, that's not good. But Keldeo does flinch, so now we got Hex on to the Dragonite from the Drip Limb. That's going to take him out. So now we got Kingdra coming in, and it gets caught in a sticky web because it's ground, so that speed's going to be a lower by one stage. But we do have Mega Charizard X coming in, and it's not going to take that much damage from the Thunderbolt. But that Icy Wind, though, is going to do a little bit of damage to both the Kingdra and the Charizard. Going to lower that speed down, though, by quite a bit. But, of course, Dragon Claw is going to take out Keldeo. So, what's going to happen? I've got the Ice Beam going on. That's going to take out the Drip Limb, man. Holy shit, bro. But now we got the Drapion and the Nidoking King coming in. What is going to happen here? Got the Night Slash going on. Onto the Kingdra. Not going to do all that much damage. We got the Sludge Bomb going on. And that's going to take out the Kingdra, man. But what's going to happen? It's got the Flare Blitz. Oh, damn. Man, that Drapion didn't have a chance in hell to survive. But now we got Dragalge coming in. So what is going to happen here, man? The Earth Power is going to take out the Dragalge from the Nidoking. King. But guess what? Flare Blitz. Oh, damn. Mega Charizard X doesn't give a fuck about who you are, what you do, man, what kind of Pokemon you are. He's going to take your ass to school and put you in that detention room. He don't even care, man, because that right there is going to be the game. Nidoking King didn't have a chance in hell to survive that Flare Blitz, man. Holy shit. Great game, though, by both competitors. But now, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the fourth and final battle? Woo! 
Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the fourth battle. We have ourselves a Generation 7 Pokebank OU match. We got Cats Are Praise versus Witless Grain. Now, Cats Are Praise is packing an interesting looking team because there's only four Pokemon. We got the Toxapex, we got Skarmory, we got Garchomp, and the Mantine. And Witless Grain has a full team of six. We also have the Toxapex, we got the Bisharp, we got Kamala, we got Klefki, we got Sableye, or could that be Mega Sableye, and we got the Gengar. Oh man, that, like, I hope that this match won't be as one-sided because of the fact that uh, Cats or Praise has only four Pokemon rather than six, but I'm thinking that something big is going to happen. I mean, he did send me this battle, Cats or Praise did, so let's see how this goes. Let's get started with the last battle. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, so we got the Skarmory leading off of one end against the Klefki, so what's going to happen here in this first turn? Paralyzation is going to be in effect, but what's this? Scarberry actually ends up having a Lumberry and he roars out the Clef Key. Very interesting choice. So Sableye comes in and he misses the Will Wisp. So what's going to happen here? We got the Stealth Rock set up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So now he's going to connect the Will Wisp with this turn and burn him. But now we got Spike set up now going on. So this right here is going to be very, very interesting to see. And he gets taunted. That ain't good. That ain't good. And he can't use Spikes after that turn. So what is going to happen next, man? What's going to happen? He withdraws his Sableye and goes into the Gengar. Oh, snap. This ain't good. This ain't good whatsoever. We got the struggle going on, and that's actually gonna break the air balloon of Gengar. So now what is gonna happen here? I mean, Skarmory's pretty much useless at that point, and whoa, it actually survived the hex, man. It survived the hex, and of course, he's gonna be taken out with the struggle recoil, man. But what is gonna happen here? Now we got Mantine coming in. What can Mantine do? Okay, we got Willis. That's gonna burn the Mantine, but he goes for substitute anyways, man. He don't even care, man. He don't even care. Plus, Mantine is actually really freaking good this generation. And the Focus Blast is not even going to put a dent in that in that substitute. And he goes for Tailwind, going to increase the speed of his teammates for four turns. And the Air Slash is going to connect on the Gengar, and he flinches. Oh, snap, ladies and gentlemen. This is getting pretty crazy, man. So what's going to happen? He switches out. He switches out and goes into the tops of Pex. Alright, man. Okay, this is getting interesting to say the least, man. Like, Air Slash is gonna connect on the Toxpex, do a little bit of damage, but like, Mantine is just sitting there chilling behind the substitute. And we got another Air Slash going on, and we're gonna get- we're gonna get another Flinch. Are you kidding me right now? Holy shit, man. Could we be seeing a Flinch Fest from Mantine onto Toxpex? We got Air Slash again. Can we get another Flinch? Can we get another Flinch? No! Not this time, man. And we got the Toxpex set up from- or sorry, the Toxic Spikes from Toxapex. Try saying that five times fast. But now Air Slash is going to connect on the Toxapex. And the Skull... Oh! What the hell is this? Why would he go for Skull on Mantime when it could have Water Absorb? Why didn't he go for Recover? That Toxapex is going to be useless the next turn, I think. I think Air Slash is going to take him out the next turn. Yep, that's it. Oh my god, what a waste of Toxapex, man. Oh no. Oh, man, Manti's just sitting there chilling, but now we got the Bisharp coming in. What the hell is... Oh, my God. This is crazy. And now we got Tailwind going on, so that means for four turns, he's going to have faster speed. And now the knockoff is going to break the substitute. And what's going to happen next, man? And we... Oh, we got Sucker Punch now, and he goes for substitute again. What the hell? Oh, my God. Okay, th this is this is hype. This is fucking hype. And he goes for Roost. He goes for Roost. So let's see, we got Tailwind, we got Substitute, we have Air Slash and Roost. That is insane. Like, th th there's there's no way that, uh, that, like, oh my god, like, Mantine. What the hell? That's so crazy. And Bishop just flinched to add insult to injury, and Mantine goes to the Tailwind again. That, 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 that's just something, man. That's just fucking something. Like, that's crazy. And the Air Slash is going to connect onto Bisharp. And what's going to happen next goes for the Iron Head, and that's actually going to take out the Substitute. Very interesting. Okay, though, ladies and gentlemen, what's going to happen next? We have Sucker Punch on the Bisharp again, and Mantine goes for yet another Substitute! Oh my god, like, like, are people really struggling, are Pokemon really struggling that much against Mantine? Like, that just goes to show that Mantine actually is really solid this generation, man. Like, holy shit. The fact that they got an HP buff and access to Roost as well makes this thing, like, just so much better. Like, obviously so much better. And Bisharp switched out knowing he can't do a damn thing to Mantine. But in comes Gengar now, and we got this Tailwind in effect, and Mantine goes for Substitute again. It goes for... Oh, my God. This, 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 this is just crazy. This is crazy. Go for Air Slash on the Gengar, and take the Gengar out. 
It's gonna take the Gengar out. I think, like, at this point right here, I think we know what's happening. Sableye comes in. But what can Sableye do? What can, what can taunt? Okay, okay. It shuts him down with the taunt, and he can't use Roos after the taunt. I forgot that you can uh, taunt someone despite having Substitute up. And Sableye switches out and goes into Bisharp again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So now we got Air Slash on the Bisharp. What's gonna happen next, man? Are we gonna get a flinch? Are we gonna get this, that? Like, I don't even know, man. And Iron Head is gonna not take out the substitute. Actually, still hangs on. And the Air Slash is going to chip away Bisharp little by little. What is gonna happen next, man? The taunt wears off. The taunt actually wears off. And why would you switch out your Bisharp? It's gonna die to hazards the next turn, man. Why would you do that? But now we got Tailwind in effect on the Mantine. But what can Sableye do aside from taunting? Yep, yeah, it's gonna taunt it. It's gonna taunt it, but Air Slash is gonna do a heavy damage to amount to. Sorry, it's gonna do a heavy amount of damage to Sableye. I'm getting so damn tongue tied, man. What the fuck? But now we got Kamala coming in. What is Kamala gonna do? Like, I don't even know, man. We got the Air Slash on the Kamala. It's gonna do a little bit of damage. All right, man. And we also got the leftovers, too. So it's gonna be pretty tough to take down. But we got the Air Slash with the crit, though. Oh my god. And we got the. What? Whoa, okay. Why would you go for Earthquake on a flying type dude? Does the opponent not know that Mantine's water and flying? What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, man. And the taunt is over. And the Tailwind just put it out. What's gonna happen? So he switches out, goes back into the Clef Key, but I don't know what Clef Key can do, though. I mean, what the hell? Like, he's behind a substitute, so he can't status him or anything, although he is already burnt. So, like, I don't even know. Like, yeah, you see that? Like, Klefki, I don't think, can do anything to Mantine unless it has attacking moves. But if it doesn't have attacking moves, that's it. Like, Mantine can... Yep. It's gonna go for Roost. It's gonna go for Roost. And it's got... Okay, it's got Draining Kiss, though. It's got Draining Kiss. So it is gonna be able to break the Substitute. But Mantine is as bulky as anything, man. And he goes for Substitute again. He goes for Substitute again. And that Draining Kiss is... Just, oh, my God. Oh, shit. Like, I, I, I'm just... I'm in shock right now, man. I'm in absolute shock. And the Draining Kiss is going to take out the Substitute of Mantine this turn. But now we got Tailwind in effect. Oh my god, dude. Like, that, that that's just insane. That is just absolutely insane. So Mantine actually switches out and goes into Toxapex to absorb the Toxic Spikes. And the Draining Kiss isn't going to do that much damage to Toxapex because it's a very tight move. Oh my god. But now we got Thunder Wave on the Toxapex. And that's going to be paralyzed. But now we got Toxic Spikes here on this as well. Oh my god. And Klefki switches out and goes into Kamala. And he's gonna take a lot of hazard damage, but he's not gonna get poisoned thanks to Comatose. And now we got Infestation from the Toxapex, so that means Kamala's gonna be taken out, man. I I have absolutely no idea what the opponent might be thinking right now, but I think he's probably pissed and Sableye switches into hazards just to get utterly destroyed. But now we got Klefki coming back in. I don't know at this point, man. I really don't even know at this point. And Toxapex is paralyzed. Like, what the hell can the opponent do? Which is Klefki and Bisharp left. And we got... Oh my god. We got Toxapex now with the infestation, man. Like, that thing's gonna be running wild. So Toxapex switches out and goes into the Garchomp. Okay, man. So now we got Spikes coming up. We got three layers of Spikes. And oh! We got Magna Rise, man! And... Whoa! Earth Power from Garchomp. Is that thing like a special attacker? Anyways, we got the Flamethrower. That's barely gonna take out Klefki. Like, it has 1% health left. And we got Twinkle Tackle. Holy shit. And Garchomp actually hangs on, man. So we got the Thunder Wave doesn't work on ground types, man. And the Hyper Beam from the Garchomp. What the hell is Garchomp thinking, man? Like, I don't even know. But that's gonna take out the Klefki. So what's gonna happen next? Now we got the Bisharp going on. And we got Mantine coming back in. And Bisharp goes down to Hazards, and that's actually going to be the game. Caster Priest is the winner in this lengthy stalemate of a battle. Holy shit, man. Great game by both competitors, but my god. Like, that, I have, oh my god. Like, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, four Pokemon against six, and the four Pokemon team end up winning the game with two Pokemon to spare, man. Like, that man time was not going down anytime soon. Toxapex was sure as hell wasn't going down anytime soon. Oh my god. Like, that was just, like, the perfect setup right there. That was disgustingly amazing. So, with all that being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna conclude this battle and conclude this video. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you smash the hell out of the like button, man. Let's see if we can keep the like goal hype going for the series, baby. And let's aim for 20 likes.
And if you want more content like this, make sure you rate, comment, share, share, share this video, and subscribe today to Mega Crasher and the community for the best, and I mean without a shadow of a doubt, the best Pokemon Sun and Moon hype that you can find right now, right here on YouTube. And just overall, the best hype and entertainment filled with fire, filled with electricity from this crazy nuthouse known as Mega Crasher. Because you guys don't know the deal by now, my friends. When we're a community type and telling you this one, you know that we shine brighter than the sun and the moon combined. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next upload.